So it's Fed Day. This is the day where the Federal Reserve comes out and they talk, they jawbone, because they're out of ammo, baby. And you're like, what's the Fed? The Fed's the real government. Maybe you don't really care. You're like, I, don't, I just don't wanna deal with it. This is a very elite group of bankers uh, that have a private institution that have the ability to essentially print currency out of thin air. And as you can imagine, it's going so well. Uh, they've had this ability since 1913. We had two central banks in America be prior to the Federal Reserve that we have now. Uh, and the last one perished in 1836 or 34 with Andrew Jackson and what they called the Jacksonites, the Jacksonians, excuse me, the Jacksonians, um, who came to power and abolished the last Federal Reserve prior to the one we have and created probably the best period of history. I mean, yeah, there was a little failed war of secession in the middle of that um, because of taxes. It wasn't over slavery. See, you have this idea when you go through public schooling in North America or anywhere that, you know, the Western world, like America is like the good guys and like, you know, our intentions are always pure and just, except that couldn't be further from the tr truth. We're probably one of the most evil empires the world has ever seen based on pure kill count alone. I mean, we literally killed one million Afghans. Uh, not Afghans, Iraqis. We killed so many people over in the Middle East, it's, in, it's insane. Uh, our leaders just lied about it and enriched themselves through war and profiteering and, and nobody does anything about it. Uh, but nonetheless, we have the real government and that is the Federal Reserve. And this is important to understand that the Federal Reserve essentially has one tool in their toolbox that they use a lot and that's the interest rates. So somehow this elite class of bankers gets to just decide the interest rates. Like, oh, today they're gonna be 5% or they're gonna be 1% or they're gonna be whatever they're gonna be. Instead of the market deciding that, like, hey, what does it cost you to loan money and what does it cost you to borrow money? And let's just let savers and debtors just figure this out. Like, I might wanna loan money, I wanna pay 5%. Somebody might want to save money and loan it to me and they might want 8% and they'll let the market figure that out. But instead what happens is the Federal Reserve comes in and they go, we have a printing press, essentially. It doesn't exactly work like that, but basically, that's what happens. And they go, uh, we'll just print out what you need and we'll make the interest rates say 80 basis points. And you're like, what the hell does that even mean? Uh, basis points are weird. It just, it's financial talk to cover up the fact that they're completely destroying our society and buying it all. Uh, and they get to hide behind the seeds, don't have to have real elections. It's, it's absolutely mind blowing what they can do. I wanna talk about the fact that they manipulate the interest rates because I think it's one of the most important things that's going on in our culture right now. And it's going to lead to the next, what I think is gonna be 10 years of really hard times, really hard times. Uh, right now we're in the eye of the storm, maybe the trailing edge of it. Uh, you see some inflation, but everything's like no big deal, right? Like, yeah, you know they're printing trillions, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to have too many effects. Some people get stimmy checks. Maybe you're a small business owner. It's harder to employ people right now because you're competing with the federal government. Uh, a lot of bad things are occurring, but this is what happens in a centrally planned economy. Maybe you're on the right and you think that we have, you know, uh, you think that we have a this democratic society where we vote in our leadership and, uh, and that we're ultimately like morally good and, and that there's not this elite group of people that are controlling things. I don't know where you sit on, on this whole thing, but ultimately the fact that a small group of people can control the interest rates tells you everything you need to know. And so what they're going to do is they're going to come out today and they're going to say everything around the fact, first of all, the thing, <laughs> first of all, hold on, time out. All these questions that they get are pre-scripted. Like all the questions are, are submitted prior to by these news organizations like Yahoo Finance and all these different MSNBC and CNBC and all these people. They will submit their questions prior to. Uh, and then the Federal Reserve Chairman, Jay Powell, Jay Powell, he'll look through and he'll go, oh, and he'll look at his note and look at his response for it. It's the most fake thing ever. And so essentially what has to happen today is they have to come out and say, the Fed is going to begin tapering, which means, hey bro, the inflation's pretty high. When are you gonna raise the interest rates, dog? Like that's pretty much what it is. Now, here's the truth of it. They can't raise the interest rates. It's impossible. And you're like, well, couldn't they just raise the interest rates? No. The stock market would dump 70 to 80% almost overnight. You're like, okay, well, I'm not invested in stocks. How's that affect me? All the retirees are invested in stocks. All the pension funds are invested in stocks. All of these state and government workers 
are invested in stocks and mutual funds. And at the end of the day, if the Federal Reserve goes out there and goes, we're gonna normalize interest rates, meaning like we're gonna raise the interest rates so that the inflation is not so crazy. So it incentivizes people to save money and people to not accept debt, everything collapses. Like the, uh, the new car market collapses, new machine market collapses, housing collapses, stock market collapses, everything freaking collapses. What if they don't raise the interest rates? It inflates, which is good. Because if you have debt, or they have debt, the largest debtors in the world, the US government, no one's ever had more debt than the US government. Never happened before in history. It's good for them. Because as the money inflates, they have more control. The middle class gets wiped out. They enrich the elites that own assets that go up with inflation. They enslave and entrap an entire class that will continue to elect them for Gibbs, which is handouts. And they can theoretically pay down their debt by just inflating it away. So therefore they get to spend, they get to consume, and then they just inflate the debt like it never gets paid off. It's, this is a major freaking problem. And the reason I mention it in this channel, I know a lot of you guys are small business owners and a lot of you guys come for the machine content and the outdoor contracting stuff and that, I get it. But you have to understand what's going on now because you will be wiped out as a class of people if you don't play the flip side of this coin. You need to own assets. And you need to own assets to go up with inflation and you need to own assets that you can self custody and that can't be printed away. And that if they are gonna to continue to print fiat currency and they're going to, they're going to print so many trillions you have no idea. The next bailout package will probably start around 10 trillion. Like the next time that there's an issue, like it'll make Trump's three trillion look like nothing. A lot of you Trump tards in the audience. Oh man, Trump was the best president. Really? Like, do you see what he, and then nobody spent more money. Nobody was in a position to have stopped this madness and been like, hey, you know what? Sorry, government's gotten too big. We're cutting funding. It is what it is. We're going to let the stock market deflate a little bit because it needs to. And we're jacking the interest rates up because that's what it had. No, you didn't hear that from that guy. All you heard was the best economy in the world. I want the interest rates to get lower and lower. We're going to spend trillions. I'm going to shut this thing down for a flu. Like no president ever done that before. That guy did. He's no friend of liberty. But regardless of what political entities are out there, it doesn't matter because this entire system is going to essentially buy it all, control it all, and then maybe it's going to fail or there's going to be some sort of civil war in North America, as sad as it, as it is to say. Uh, and what will be replaced by that? Who knows? I mean, history is written by the victor, so who knows what happens there? But it's important for you to understand, and this is why I do these videos, you need to own assets that they can't print. You need to own assets that allow you to have privacy in your transactions because the solution, the peaceful Gandhi-like solution to this is going to be building a parallel society, building a secondary health system that's better than their crap state health system. Like building secondary companies and goods and services and ways to produce food and ship food, like that's better than the state capitalist model because communism is something that's not going to be tried again or communism is not something you have to worry about state capitalism is the enemy of our time this is the chinese model of like let companies build then come over take them over have state control where state manages the means of production super sketch. I mean, you've got political idiots that have never built anything in their entire lives, have never saved their own capital and risked their own capital to build something as simple as a lawn business and 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 see the fruits or the non-fruits of their labor. No, these are people that get into power and then want to use that power to dictate who, what, and where things can flow. And if not, we'll show up with guns. That's the entire argument for, for politics at this point in time. And if you happen to believe that you know the U.S. is the good guys and that we have, live in a democracy, you're naive. You're completely naive. But my message is watch what the Federal Reserve does. Watch has, how they go out. You need to watch these things so you can start to understand what's going on. I'll link to their talk today. Maybe I'll even do some commentary on, on one of their talks. I'd love to do that. I know it's not everybody's favorite subject, but what you have to understand is that they're gonna go out there and try to tell the market that, oh, we're gonna start tapering, which means raising the interest rates, so that people are like, okay, they're not completely insane, right? Like they need to raise the interest rates. Inflation is getting is out of control. They say it's 5%. I think it's more like 15 or 20% based on the crap I buy. And some of the stuff I'm buying is up 50%. Not anything I'm buying is down. But some of the stuff I'm buying is up 50%. And this is all by design because as the inflation goes up, you get to, you get to just crush the middle class. 
You get to just like all their money goes to like food and housing. And then at some point they can barely afford it. And they don't get to buy financial assets or things that go up with the money printing, which is a sad situation because then what happens is you have a surf class. Like I have a this Hayek wrote about this in the road to surf them. I'll link to the book. The book is thick. It is hard to understand, but it is, there's like brilliance on in every paragraph in that book. But Hayek wrote about this, like the road to surf them. Hayek also said we would be trapped in this situation until we devise a money that is not in the hands of government and that cannot be controlled by government. Silver and gold are wonderful solutions. The average North American or Western person uh, has no idea what silver or gold feels like, sounds like, looks like. They have no idea. Uh, and so we need something that's, and also you can take it at the point of a gun. I mean, you can just you know show up and take somebody's silver and gold. It's not an awesome solution. Maybe having a vault chain or something like that is a really good solution, but something needs to occur here. But my message to you is the Federal Reserve is out of tools. They can't lower the interest rates anymore. If they do want to lower the interest rates, they have to go to negative interest rates. Imagine how inflation will ride from there, which means they have to hyperinflate the currency on purpose, put you into some sort of digital currency. That is my biggest concern is that they do this. And at that point, like I have to decide like if I even want to be here because I, I certainly don't want to be in it living amongst a, uh, a population that is completely trapped by the Federal Reserve. Right now we have cash, we have ways to do transactions privately. We do have access to crypto, we can use it. And that is the solution is that we need to do that. We need to have a peaceful revolution to where we switch our economic activities to honest money. It has to be money, not currency. Money is a store of value. Money is something typically tangible. Money is something that can't just be printed out of thin air. It can't be currency units where they just print it. It can't be Fed coin. That is my biggest concern. But what I want to say is that the Fed cannot taper. They can't raise interest rates. Everything will collapse. They know it. You know it. I know it. But they have to go out there so that the general population thinks, oh, inflation is just transitory. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a temporary thing. It's, uh, we're going to taper. We need to let the market know that we're gonna raise the interest rates. At some point, they will, they'll have to. Because the inflation will get so out of control, as it's already doing, but it'll get so out of control that they'll have to raise the interest rates. At which point, everything collapses. At which point, it's my prediction, oh my goodness, look how bad everything is. We have a solution. It's called FedCoin, put it on your smartphone. No more need for big banks. No more need for, no more need for, you know, every, all your transactions. No more need for Visa, MasterCard. Everything's right here with the Federal Reserve. We own it all. They're the real government. They'll own the entire, they'll own everything. They'll know everything that occurs in, in Western civilization. They'll know every transaction that occurs. They'll know where goods and services and who and what and when they're buying them. They'll be able to lock you out anytime. Oh, you're a bad person or you are you? Because in this country, you're guilty before proven innocent. But, oh, you're under investigation for just random, random uh, uh, accusations, like man, just whatever, like whether true or not, we're gonna lock you out of the financial system for the moment. I mean, they can control you to an extent where it'll be official slavery in North America without ever firing a shot. And the average bear doesn't understand this. Because they're just walking around with their ma with their mask, being told, "Oh, you need one. Sh oh, you need two shots. Sorry, you need three shots. You're going to need a shot. You're going to need a booster. Whenever we tell you you need a booster, keep that mask. Back. I'll take it off. Put it back on. You're freaking slaves, and you need to you need to understand, and you need to start sharing with your friends and families and neighbor and business associates. We need a new system, and that's why I bring your attention to blockchain. I know not everybody's into it, but that's the solution." We've got to have a solution that's outside of the hands of government so that we can peacefully renegotiate with our government overlords when they lose the tax base. The solution is take their ability to tax the citizenship away. Take, it, take the power away from banks. Take the power away from the Federal Reserve. Leave them the bag holder of a bunch of useless currency things called dollars and move to something they can't print. Evil will show up in another form, but it'll buy us like 80 to 100 years of prosperity. And that's my message, is that the Federal Reserve cannot taper. There will be inflation until there's not because the inflation will rise to a point where people won't be able to buy goods and services. So the demand for goods and services will, will just dissipate. And what happens is you end up with this dollar whip it theory that me and the economic ninja have put out there a couple videos. I'll try to link to those where you have inflation 
Inflation causes a lack of, of demand in the economy because it's like, oh, I, I got to buy less stuff. It's like I, my salary is not going up as much as the inflation is going up. So therefore you cut back spending, that's deflation. So all of a sudden prices start coming down and then they come out with a universal basic income or crazy money printing and that's the end game. It's hyperinflation on the way out, hyperinflate the debt away. By the way, here's our new currency. Boom, it's on your phone. Happy-go-lucky, bankers own it all. You're officially a slave. If you don't think that's gonna happen, download this video, keep it, reference it in 60 months because I'm probably not gonna be wrong. If this video doesn't get taken down, probably will at some point in time, let's be real. But at some point in time, It'll be on Odyssey. I'll link to my Odyssey. It'll be on, it'll be on blockchain solutions. So it's not really getting scrubbed. Uh, 2026, definitely 2027, hopefully not earlier. This will be, this will be a thing. This is going to end really bad. And the stock market at the moment is waiting like, oh, is it, are they going to taper? Are they not going to taper? If they taper, we're going to sell off, right? If they raise the interest rates, stock market sells off. Housing, I mean, gone. New car market, gone. Like new manufacturing for construction machinery, gone. Everything just poof, gone. You're like, that sounds drastic and extreme. It's not, it's what's gonna happen. So they can't. So they have to inflate their way out. It'll cause a decrease in purchases long-term because like, dude, if we're paying $10 for gas at some point. It's like, I'm not going on vacation, right? Like I'm just trying to pay for the gas I need to travel where I gotta go and nothing else, right? And then what happens that causes a deflationary death spiral deflation in assets and then the fed will come out with the endless money printing like they've printed trillions but you haven't seen nothing yet and then at that point in time hopefully the general populace goes we need a different currency and hopefully leaders like you will shift your business activities to crypto i get this question all the time do you accept crypto yes yes that's the answer is the answer is get out of their system in any way you can i don't care if you start trading seashells or cigarettes or anything old school like that. Just stop using their currency to the best of your extent. It's gonna, it's gonna all go negative to begin with. Like it's just, it's all gonna go away at the end of this anyway, but begin the transition so that you can transition easier. I've ranted a little bit too long. I've enjoyed this. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your subscriptions. Thanks for liking these videos. It makes a huge difference on the videos that are liked and the view count and the videos that are not. And if you did like it, hit that down button for me twice. Let me know what I can do better in these videos and what subjects you want to hear from. Thanks, guys.